You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. What I want to experiment with today is another recipe from a restaurant trade journal. If you've seen my other videos, I've explained these journals before. A trade journal is a magazine that goes out to a specific business or an industry. For example, this magazine goes out to restaurants and the advertisements in there might be for commercial products like commercial ice machines or a six foot steam table, the thing you wouldn't, things you wouldn't see in your home. So therefore you don't see these magazines on the magazine racks at the grocery store. Now what I like about these magazines is they often contain recipes that were created by professional chefs for their restaurants. And the one that I want to do today comes from a restaurant in New York City. And it's a, it's a quiche that's made with a lot of onions. It's a sweet onion quiche. You don't put a lot of sugar in it. You use sweet onions. And it sounds intriguing. So the first thing I need to do is start prepping my onions. The original recipe calls for five cups of sweet yellow onions, thinly sliced. I don't know what five cups is. So I'm going to be filling my 9 inch 23 centimeter pie plate so it's well mounded over because I know they're going to cook down with onions and then I'm going to weigh them and I'll give you the weight in ounces and grams. I use metrics because a lot of these recipes end up on the internet and people in other countries are on the metric system. I'm going to, rather than dice my onion, I'm going to use kind of long, thin slices because I want them to be a little on the stringy side. Oh, these onions smell good. I bought the sweetest onions I could find at the grocery store. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut not all the way down through like I usually do. I'm going to cut most of the way down through and let this root section hold my onions together. And then I'm going to do thin slices. So what I end up with are these long pieces. like so, kind of thinly sliced. And I bought four of these onions because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. Okay, getting down toward the end here. I don't think I'm going to be able to do much with that. I'm going to start stacking these in my pie plate until I fill that pie plate up well. So here are my chopped onions. You can see how they mound over the top a little bit. I'm expecting them to cook down quite a bit. I did put them into a four cup measuring cup and it came up over the top quite a bit. So I would say easily that's five cups. Next, I want to weigh these so I can give you an accurate weight of what I'm actually using for onions. All right, so let's see what my onions weigh here. People write to me about my scale saying, where can I get one of those? Well, you can't. They don't make this model anymore. And if you could find it brand new, they sell for upwards of $500. I didn't spend $500 for it. I bought it on eBay. Someone was selling two of them and people were bidding on one and not the other. And there was a reserve. And once I found out what the reserve was, $50, then I bid $50 on the one that no one was bidding on and I got it. Okay, so what's that? One pound, 2.6 ounces. I've got a little converter here. 
that's about 18.2 18.6 ounces 18.6 ounces 527 grams so figure 18 ounces 525 grams of finished chopped onions I would buy like a pound and a half of onions and after you peel everything and take off the outer layers that you want to get rid of hopefully you'll have 18 ounces 525 grams I'm heating a large skillet here on the stove and I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of fat in there you can use clarified butter pure olive oil use the regular pure olive oil not the extra virgin olive oil it has too low of a smoke point you don't want to burn the oil in my case what I'm using is goose fat because I've got it I've had it for a while in the refrigerator I want to use it up goose fat's a nice healthy fat because it's low in saturated fat in Europe they love to fry potatoes in goose fat and there go my onions I've seen videos on YouTube of people sauteing and extra virgin olive oil and billows of cumulus clouds of smoke soar forth as they're burning their oil and destroying the flavor it's got too low of a smoke point it burns at low temperature extra virgin olive oil save it for flavoring so I'm going to cook these now stirring them off and to cook them down I don't want to fully caramelize them but I want to get them partially caramelized till they're cooked and they start to change color that's going to take 10 to 12 minutes so there are my onions I turned my heat off under these I sauteed these for a total of 15 minutes I had so many onions in there that it took a while for the moisture to cook off once the moisture cooks out that's when the onions start to cook and they start to change color you can caramelize these a lot darker if you want in my case as I said I only wanted them lightly caramelized so these are a light golden color I'm gonna let these cool set these aside and next I'm gonna start working on my pie shell for my quiche for my pastry shell I'm gonna be using a recipe that I've been using since my college days unchanged back when I was in college I had a full set of Graham Care Galloping Gourmet cookbooks and I believe this recipe was for something like a fruit tart the first time I made it it came out perfectly for all these decades I've been using the same recipe it's just one of the easiest pie shells I've ever made why change anything I do vary it a little bit I have to say that for a sweet pie shell I'll put some sugar in it like when I'm making a, a sweet pie for a savory pie I leave the sugar out of the pie shell dough into a large bowl I'm gonna put one and one third cups that's seven ounces by weight 200 grams of all-purpose flour I always weigh my flour when baking I'm gonna set this aside and into a smaller bowl I'm going to put one large egg this is at room temperature the reason why will be obvious in a moment one tablespoon of water one quarter teaspoon of salt and then I'm going to beat this together with a whisk just to mix it up a little bit and then to that I'm going to add this is a half of a cup, four ounces, 113 grams of whole butter. Also at room temperature. And this is why everything needs to be at room temperature because you have to break this up. Which would be not easy to do if that butter was a hard cold block. From the refrigerator so what I want to do is I want to break this up until the butter is reduced to small beads I'll show you a close-up of that when I get there so there it is my butter 
broken up into small beads. The reason why I want to break this up is because that'll distribute that butter evenly when I add this to my flour to make my pastry dough. Now returning back to my flour again. I'm going to pour my egg mixture in there, egg and butter. Blend this together. You can blend it with a spatula until it's dry enough to knead. And it kneads real quickly, like seconds. This is such an easy pastry dough to make. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there. Clean my spatula. And then just going to get in there with my fingers and knead this together. Whoops. Got to get some on the counter. Got to get it all over the counter. And that's it. You can see how quickly that comes together. It takes only seconds to knead. That's my dough for my pie shell. To roll my crust, I'm going to work on a piece of parchment paper. And to get it the right shape and size, I, with a pencil, put a guideline on my parchment paper to keep the graphite from getting into my dough. I'm going to turn it over and work this way. I'm going to shape my dough by hand. I have a rolling pin, it's still in plastic, label still on it. I'm just so used to doing this by hand, I never think to use my rolling pin. So I'm going to put my dough in the center there and I have a flour duster, powdered sugar duster. This is why I like to work on a piece of parchment paper because it's just so easy to turn it around while I'm working. I'm putting my hand along the edge to try to help protect it from breaking around the ends. You can flip it over easily with parchment paper as well by just doing that. <laughs> parchment paper is just one of those miracles of modern humankind. And again, working with my hands, look how quickly that goes. That might be a little bit too small. Yes, so I'm going to go a little bit larger here because I do want some extra around the sides that I'm going to use to form the decorative edge of my pie shell. A little bit of tearing there, but that's okay. It just comes right back together again. Okay, I think this is ready to go into my pie plate. And I think the easiest way is just to put this on top like so, and then flip the whole thing over. ease the pastry into the plate all the way around. You want to squeeze out any air pockets. And 
And then I want to turn this edge underneath. So I'm going to use that to make my decorative edge. I need my little rubber mat because it's noise. It doesn't need to be turned under there, but there it does. Okay. So far, so good. And then how I'm going to shape my edge is just using my fingers. I'm going to pinch it like that to make a scalloped edge. All the way around. See, that only takes a minute. Okay, and then I don't want that sharp top edge because that might burn in the oven. So I'm going to pat that down a little bit. Fix it in a couple of places. And that looks like that is a pie shell ready for filling. And I'm ready to put my onion filling, my quiche filling, in this pie shell. I am in the meantime heating my oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. That's equivalent to 218 degrees Celsius. Can you heat an oven to 218 degrees Celsius, give or take? So while my oven is heating up, I'm going to mix the filling for my quiche and put that into my pie shell. I moved my sautéed onions now to a medium-sized bowl. To this, I want to add one half cup, roughly, this is three ounces, 85 grams of chopped prosciutto. Normally when I buy prosciutto, I buy it in a big slab and then dice it into little cubes. But this time I bought the prosciutto that comes in very thin, paper-thin slices. Because I was thinking rather than wanting chunks in there, I might want little flakes. So that'll break up into little flakes. So again, that's 3 ounces, 85 grams of prosciutto. And then I have 3 ounces, 85 grams of shredded Gruyere cheese. And then I want to put three, three eggs in there. These are large eggs. Okay. So there's my eggs. One quarter cup of milk. You can use half and half. I'm going to be putting in one tablespoon of sugar. Kind of sweeten those onions up a little bit. One tablespoon of flour. One teaspoon of salt a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper just to give it a little bit of kick. I'm going to grate maybe half a teaspoon, quarter to a half teaspoon of black pepper in there. Then finally take out my nutmeg grater. If I don't lose it, I'm going to grate some fresh nutmeg in there. 
about a quarter teaspoon. Okay, now I'm gonna go put a glove on and mix this up with my hand. I just think it's so much easier to do this with my hands rather than a spoon or a spatula. I want to get this well mixed up, mostly because I want to distribute that flour and sugar in those spices. I know the liquid's going to move around very nicely. All right, that's looking good already, so that is ready to go into my pie shell. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking that might not be enough to fill a nine inch pie shell. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a quarter cup of heavy cream because I've got it. And I'm going to add another egg. And then I'm going to mix that in there just to increase this volume a little bit. One thing I would like to try, but I'm not going to do it this time around, is I've got some artichoke hearts. And I'm willing to, if I were a betting man, willing to bet that adding artichoke hearts to this would be, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? Artichoke hearts, artichoke hearts, artichoke hearts. Hold on a minute. There's my pie shell. Just messed up the edge a little bit, but I'll fix that. I think I have enough to fill my pie shell. If not, I can cut up some artichoke hearts and just push those down inside. Okay, I'm going to fill my pie shell here. And that might be just enough. I don't think I need any artichoke hearts. Yes, that'll be fine. See, it needed a little bit of extra. So the extra egg and the cream brought that volume up just enough. Okay, so there is my quiche. Now, baking time. It's going to be 35 to 40 minutes. And again, that's in a 425 degree oven, 425 Fahrenheit, 218 Celsius. I wanted to prepare a side dish to go with my quiche. So I got onto the internet to see what are some of the traditional side dishes that the French serve with quiche. And it turns out the most popular is salad, but another favorite is sauteed vegetables. So that's what I want to do is I want to saute, quickly saute some vegetables just so that I can have a vegetable side dish that I can put alongside my quiche. I already have some broccoli florets that I can saute. What I want to do here is just slice up a few mushrooms. I don't know that I'm going to use all of the ones I have here. Maybe just a couple of them since they're rather large. And I'm going to saute these with my broccoli. I've got a large skillet here heating on the stove to which I'm going to be adding some clarified butter. I'm using clarified butter because this has a higher smoke point. You could use olive oil if you wanted to. Use pure olive oil, not the extra virgin. On my website, I have a procedure in the recipe archive under basics, I believe. A procedure for clarifying butter. And then I'm going to add my broccoli to that. And I'm going to saute that for about three minutes to get it halfway tender. 
and then I'll be adding the mushrooms. Okay, my broccoli has been going now for three minutes. You can see a couple of these are just starting to brown a little bit. So I am going to put some more clarified butter in there because I know the mushrooms are going to absorb a lot of this fat. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm using mushrooms is because I know they'll absorb any of the excess fat in the pan. And I'm going to finish this off with a little bit of cream. And I don't want fat in there to break up the cream. All right, so there go my mushrooms in there now. And again, I'm going to saute these for about three minutes. The mushrooms will cook a lot more quickly than the broccoli, so they start a little bit later. And then this will be just about ready to serve as a side dish. Okay, so there is my finished broccoli and onions now. Broccoli and mushrooms, rather. I'm going to just lightly salt that and grind some black pepper in there. And then to finish this, I have a little bit of heavy cream here. And I'm just going to add maybe a tablespoon or two. Not a lot. The heat is off, by the way. And now I'm going to let that sit. And that will be my side dish. Okay, I just took this out of the oven. I want you to see what it looks like. So there it is. Isn't that beautiful? This was in the oven for actually 32 minutes. After 32 minutes, I decided there was enough browning. So, no, not 32 minutes. Yes, 32 minutes. I said 35 to 40 minutes, but after 32, 33 minutes, I decided there was enough browning around the edges as well as the top. So I took it out of the oven. The one thing that's odd is I got a little bit of cracking right here and it just started to crack right there. Nonetheless, I'm going to let this cool down a little bit, cut into it, and then we'll see how good it tastes. Okay, the first piece out is always the most difficult. Good sign right there. It's plenty firm enough. Figure you might as well cut it where the crack is. That way, it doesn't look like nice crumbly pie crust. A bit of the crust fell off right there, but we got enough to taste. Oh, 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 that looks so good. I have never made a quiche like this before. Sweet onion quiche. The filling is done to perfection. That is incredibly, incredibly good. And melt in your mouth tender. Mmm. That is easily one of the best quiches I've ever tasted. So excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my sweet onion quiche. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.